Well, welcome to the Launchpad News from our TLP Canada studio. This is the TLP News Weekly, bringing the latest updates of the world of space exploration. My name's Zach Auburn. Let's dive right on into it. Our first story, well, it's been three months since NASA unveiled the Moon to Mars Exploration Architecture Plans for Human Exploration, and now they are preparing to gear up for a crucial second phase. They have already completed the strategic analysis cycle, paving the way for the upcoming architecture concept review. The primary focus of this architecture review will be for human missions to Mars. This critical view is expected to begin sometime in November. To ensure comprehensive input from stakeholders and experts, NASA has actively sought feedback on the initial architecture definition documents. They conducted one-on-one meetings with companies and international partners alongside two workshops they hosted in June designed for international parties, companies, and universities to take part in. Beyond its strategic benefits, this architecture also serves as an essential advocacy tool for NASA. By clearly outlining the planned missions and objectives, it allows the agency to communicate what may be the impacts of budget cuts. This way, supporters of specific elements can articulate the significance of those missions and encourage their preservation. NASA Associate Administrator Jim Free said, We have to deliver programs on time and on budget, and that is really hard. With the second phase of the Moon to Mars architecture underway, NASA is making significant strides towards its ultimate objective of sending the first ever humans to Mars. Well, NASA's ambitious plans to go to Mars, first milestone they have to get to is we have to get back to the moon. And part of that was an ambitious plan to deploy the first fission-powered system on the moon to help power long-term lunar presence for the Artemis program, but that now faces uncertainty as budget cuts threaten to cut the implementation of this cutting-edge nuclear technology. NASA endeavors to establish a permanent human presence on the moon, and it hinges on the development and utilization of advanced power systems capable of supplying reliable and continuous energy. Traditional solar panels have served as primary energy sources for previous lunar missions, but their efficiency is limited due to the moon's extended periods of darkness, particularly on the lunar poles where they are going to be developing the first bases. However, the road to implementing this fission power on the moon has faced considerable setback due to budget constraints at NASA. As federal funding priorities fluctuate and other national initiatives demand financial support, the allotted budget for the Artemis program has come under scrutiny. The funding challenges have compelled NASA to reconsider its timeline for deploying fission power systems on the moon. The initial target was to achieve a nuclear-powered lunar base by the late 2020s. This now appears impossible, and the agency may need to adopt a more phased approach to the Artemis program. To offset some of the financial pressures, NASA is actively seeking partnerships with international space agencies and private companies. Collaborative efforts are aimed at sharing the cost burden of developing this fission power system and leveraging those combined expertise to expedite the development and deployment of such a system. China is working on their own lunar base, and they call it the International Lunar Research Station, or ILRS, and the first country other than China and Russia has officially signed on as partner. Venezuela has become the first partner in the International Lunar Research Station. The IRLS is considered a parallel project to NASA's Artemis program and aims at establishing a permanent lunar base in the 2030s, also on the moon's south pole. Under this agreement, China and Venezuela will collaborate extensively on the demonstration, engineering, implementation, operation, and applications of the ILRS. This includes joint scientific goals, joint design efforts, and more. The CNSA has stated that the signing of this joint statement signifies the expansion of cooperation between the two countries from near-Earth space to the moon and into deep space. The ILRS project, led by China, plans to undertake a series of robotic missions through the 2020s as precursors to the establishment of the permanent human lunar base. These missions will include Chang'e 7, mission to the South Pole in 2026, and Chang'e 8's mission to test a resource utilization and 3D printing technology on the moon in 2028. China has set the goal of sending their first astronauts by 2030. Pakistan and the UAE have also expressed their intent to join the initiative, while China's DSEL is in negotiations with more than 10 other countries and organizations. 
In contrast, the United States-led Artemis program has attracted 27 countries, including Canada, India, the UAE, and many others, and other negotiations are currently underway. China aims to complete the signing of its agreements and memorandums of understanding with space agencies and organizations from its founding members of the IRLSCO by October 2023. We'll be following the developments, but let us know in the comments who you think will win and make the first base on the South Pole, Team Artemis or Team ILRS. China has also recently revealed its preliminary blueprints for its first crewed lunar landing mission, marking a significant step forward in their ambitious space program. The plan unveiled by the Chinese National Space Administration sets the stage for China's ultimate goal of establishing a sustained human presence on the moon. The plans outline a multi-stage approach that encompasses various missions and technology advancements leading up to the historic landing of Chinese astronauts on the moon by 2030. China intends to launch its first crewed mission within the decade. The mission will involve sending Taikonauts, Chinese astronauts, to the moon vicinity, where they will conduct extensive scientific research, test critical technologies, and lay the groundwork for subsequent missions. This initial mission will serve as a precursor for the first crewed lunar landing mission expected to take place a couple years later. Now, before we continue on with the news, we want to take a quick moment and thank all of the incredible TLP members. Your continued generous support helps us continue to expand our team, upgrade our equipment, and expand and dream of new ways of bringing you the best possible coverage of everything space. If you haven't yet, make sure you've joined us over on the Discord, and that's an invite for everyone. Our Discord is free and open to the public, but for our TLP members, when you link your YouTube with Discord, that is where you get to go behind the scenes here at the Launchpad Network, and we're excited. We're going to be start rolling out to some updates coming to our our website and the app over the coming weeks so make sure that you've joined us over on the discord if you want to become a tlp member consider hitting that join button down below just starting at two dollars a month you help support what we do and get to go behind the scenes here at tlp now let's jump back into the news well, as the saying goes, all good things must come to end, and the European Space Agency is preparing to bid farewell to the EOLS spacecraft after an impressive six years in orbit. EOLS has been instrumental in providing invaluable data on Earth winds and atmosphere, contributing to improved weather forecasts and climate research. As the spacecraft's fuel reserves are running low, ESA has deemed it necessary to prepare to conduct a controlled and assisted re-entry of the spacecraft to avoid any potential risks of uncontrolled re-entry, which could pose a threat to populated areas. The re-entry is expected to be carried out in the coming weeks, and updates will be shared from the ESA, and we will bring those to you here through our weekly news updates as well as TLPnetwork.com. Well, to wrap us up this week, Virgin Galactic is preparing to launch its second commercial crew, Galactic 2, and we finally know who's on board. The Galactic 2 crew will include 80-year-old John Goodwin, an early Virgin Galactic ticket holder and esteemed Olympian, and Keisha Shahoff and Anastasia Mayers, the Caribbean mother-daughter duo who won their seats through a fundraising draw organized by the nonprofit organization Space for Humanity. John, Keisha, and Anastasia will be joined by Beth Moses, the Virgin Galactic Chief Astronaut Instructor, as well as Virgin Galactic's second astronaut. With less than 700 people having traveled to space, this diverse and dynamic crew highlights Virgin Galactic's mission to break down the barriers that once hindered individuals from accessing space. Well, looking at the week ahead, we've got three upcoming launches. First, we've got DSR launching on a PSLV rocket from the first launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in India, targeting on July 25th. Then on the 26th of July, we have SpaceX targeting the launch of Jupiter-3 on Falcon Heavy from Historic Launch Complex 39A at NASA Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Now, we are keeping an eye on this mission, as it did slip a few days already, and it may slip more as teams are evaluating the Viasat satellite that launched on Falcon Heavy a few months ago. It had an antenna issue, and Jupiter-3 has the same antenna on board, so we are keeping a close eye on this date as it may slip. And then July 28th, Rocket Lab is set to launch its 40th Electron mission called We Love the Nightlife. To stay up to date on all upcoming Earth departures from around the world, head over to tlpnetwork.com slash launches and make sure you join us right here on the launch pad for full live launch coverage. Have a favorite story of the week? Let us know in the comments. Was there one you think we should have included? Also let us know down there in the comments. Spaceflight is always on the rise and you are part of this next great adventure into the stars, so subscribe so you never miss another launch live and stay up to date on the latest of space news. But from TLP's Canada studio, my name's Zach, this was the TLP News Weekly, and we will see you next time because space is better together.